Okay, we are now live on the Deja T. Crawford Foundation page. Thank you for your patience, everyone. So sorry, technical difficulties. You can blame it on me, the, the operator. Um, but uh, this is our second year with our award. So this is now probably part four if you were on my personal page. <laughs> so thank you for your patience. Uh, we want to thank everyone that did join us tonight and thank you for your patience. And without further ado, we will do a part two, three, four, five, whatever it is that you've seen already. And we'll have Nathaniel Crawford kick us off with a few words. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, again, sorry for all of the uh, technical delays, but um, as we know, the devil is always busy, but um, he doesn't stop this show. So uh, my name is Nathaniel Crawford. I am the uh, CEO and one of the founders of the Deja T. Crawford Foundation, which is a foundation that supports the performing arts and journalism uh, curricula for students that are currently in college that meet a certain level of criteria uh, that is reviewed by our application review committee. Um, tonight, we are celebrating and showcasing four of our students that um, met the criteria that are wonderful in their fields, um, that are just wonderful young people trying to and making a difference uh, in our communities. Um, it is a pleasure to be with all of you today. Um, we have all of, uh, we have a lot of places represented. I mean, if you watch part one, uh, you'll see that there's many states that are represented uh, on this call today. Um, and I'm just so proud and happy that Deja can be represented in such a major way. Um, again, thank you for joining us this evening and I will pass it back to um, Sharita. Okay, thank you, Nate. And we're going to have introductions of the board at this time. Uh, so, Nate, I'm not sure if you said who you are in relation to the board, but if you could share your title and then we'll turn it over to Natavia and then to Thurman. Okay. So, again, as, as I previously stated, uh, my name is Nathaniel Crawford. I am the CEO of the Deja T. Crawford Foundation. I am also Deja's father. Natavia. Right. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Natavia Frazier. I am the co-founder and board member of the Deja T. Crawford Foundation, and I am also Deja's mother. All right. Thank you, Natavia. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, I got it. Uh, my name is Thurman Rouse. I'm a proud board member of the Deja T. Crawford Fund as well. Um, thank you for having me tonight. Awesome. And Natavia, if you can explain the scholarship review committee actions, I know that uh, you had a bit of a challenge this year because of so much talent, but if you can share what you did, then uh, we'd love to hear it. Yes. Yeah, so um, what we did, because we had so many uh, applicants, uh, we, we started off with uh, academic history. Um, we looked at their extracurricular activities, their awards to see how they balanced everything. Um, we looked at their community service, how they are involved in their community, uh, recommendation letters. Uh, it was some really great letters um, and how they were viewed as individuals um, and, and last but not least, we looked at the creativity and or originality of what they submitted, um, whether it was an essay or a spoken word piece. And, you know, we got an opportunity to, you know, get a feel for who they were. Um, they made it really personal. So, that was um, very great. Awesome. And um, last but not least, we, we got to um, see how they're gonna use their art in the future. 
And that is what we are most excited about. So thank you for explaining that, Natavia. Um, now, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and have the introductions of our award recipients. And we will start off with Ariana. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ariana Shaloub. I am from Massachusetts, and I'm going to be studying journalism at Tufts University this fall. Great, great. And next we have Daphne. Hello, everyone. My name is Daphne Goodsby. I am from Houston, Texas, and I'm going to be studying political science with a minor in English at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia this fall. Perfect, perfect. And next we have Lana. Hello everyone. My name is Lana Priester. I am from New York and I will be majoring in communications on my journey to become a journalist. And I am actually attending Virginia Union University currently. Right, and we were saying you're already in your dorm room. So congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, Aaron. Hello, everybody. My name is Aaron J. McLeod. Um, I am from Detroit, Michigan, and I will be majoring in uh, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting, uh, which is a BFA, and also I'm going to be attending Columbia College Chicago in the fall. Awesome, awesome. Well, again, we want to make sure that you know how special we feel that you are with the talent that you've submitted and I am going to turn it over to Thurm because I think he has something to share with you. Yes, I do. Thank you, Sharita. First and foremost, again, thank you to the board for, uh, for hosting this event. Special thank you to all of the uh, participants. Special thank you to all of the participants and um, congratulations. First and foremost, this is going to be a $500 uh, scholarship reward for all four of you. So congratulations. Congratulations. With that, oh, go oh, ahead. I was, gonna, I was gonna just say with that being said, just uh, again, a reminder of all of the grit and perseverance that you've all shown to get to this point. Natavia hit it on the, the nail on the head earlier. It's a very difficult process to select all of you. And uh, congratulations again. Awesome. And I know that Natavia and Nathaniel had comments. So Natavia? Uh, yeah, um, like I was saying earlier, I just, um, I, I know you all have heard this, but um, I am very proud of you and just excited to see what's gonna come from you in the, in the near future. Love it. Nate? So piggybacking off of uh, what Natavia uh, said and, and what I alluded to earlier, um, it's just, I'm, I'm here today as a very humbled father and as a fan. Um, I cannot wait to celebrate in all of your successes in all of the things that you will do because once you're a part of the Daisy T. Crawford Foundation family, um, you stay there, we're kind of stuck with each other. Uh, we I will be checking in on you from time to time to see how things are going. I uh, just want the applicants to know and the families of the applicants, if there's ever any any struggles or any uh, anything that you want to discuss or talk about. Um, one thing about our board is we are a very diverse group of people as far as skill set and knowledge and information is concerned. So if there's a question that you can't find an answer to, if there's any type of help that we could provide at all, just please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, we are open books over here. Deja was an open book. Deja helped everybody. So we try to mimic that in her name and in her honor. So I just want to sit back as a fan and um, enjoy the rest of the uh, broadcast. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. And yes, this is the second most exciting part after awarding our recipients, but this is what we're calling our student talent spotlight. And this is where we left off when we thought we were live before. <laughs> so for each of our recipients, <laughs> um, we'd like to know how did you hear about the foundation and performing your original piece, if you can explain what inspired you and you have up to five minutes. Doesn't mean you have to take the whole five minutes if you don't need to, but you do have up to five minutes. And we'll start off with Ariana. 
Okay, so I heard about the Deja T. Crawford Foundation from Facebook. And so I'm going to be reading my written piece called Happiness, and I was inspired to write it um, about my passions. Happiness is not a goal. It's a byproduct of a life well lived. This quote attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt is a favorite of mine. I'm a self-taught artist and really enjoy drawing, illustration, and animation. My interest in artwork began early in school. I vividly remember painting pretty apple trees as a first grader. I recall the sheer delight of using rubber stamps to dip into thick red paint to create the apples. I felt great pride seeing my first artwork displayed on the class bulletin board. Self-motivation to create art em emanated from inside. Over the course of my elementary and secondary education, I accelerated my pursuits, drawing all kinds of pictures stemming from the joy that I'd first discovered in my earliest school years. Education. My artistry has not only been just for fun, but it has also served as an important vehicle of my self-expression. I'm a happy person by nature, and I believe I'm hardwired to have a friendly, positive disposition. My participation in the arts has definitely increased my happiness. I enjoy helping people and being kind to others, and I derive much personal satisfaction in return. I value writing composition, music, dance, video, theater, as well as animation and illustration. I am proud of my demonstrated talents in these multiple areas. A school alumnus who started up his own personal training business requested that I design his official logo, and he was thrilled with the results. My logo is featured as the main symbol of on his website and on hundreds of promotional t-shirts. I also did cover art for two school alumni working on their podcast. They were really pleased, and this illustrative work was even featured for an evening on the electronic billboards in Times Square in New York City. It just feels great when someone asks me to create a drawing or illustration for them, and I could witness their delight seeing the results and how I brought their idea to life. I was raised to be kind and considerate. I have been generous with my time and efforts to help people. I am a person of strong Christian faith, and my local Greek Orthodox community has been the cultural and religious backbone of my upbring upbringing and inner strength. My family trip to Greece a few summers ago was so enjoyable to me and meaningful on multiple levels. It was great. In fact, I'm using my artistic skills and love of Greek culture to illustrate a children's book about being a Greek American girl who traveled to Greece. The book should be completed and published within eight months and I'm so excited to see my illustrative work in print. I loved my high school years at Austin Prep and I immersed myself in extracurriculars and service opportunities. I've been a leader with an innovative spirit. I'm captain of the cheerleading team at Austin, and I'm the president of our school's filmmaking club called APS Media. This is an important core club at our school. At APS Media, we do a weekly video news show, and I have facilitated our recording of important on-campus events. I am so proud that I also established a new first ever animation club at Austin Prep this year, and it has been welcomed with really favorable interest and participation by fellow students. I truly enjoy teaching others the skills that I've developed about il il illustration and animation. My plan is to continue being an involved person while in college. I have a fine work ethic and my academic record demonstrates that well. However, it is my hope that one can see there is so much more to me. I am really pleased and proud to participate in my school, church, and local community. My love for the arts has been an important hinge pin to my work, beliefs, and accomplishments. Thank you. That is phenomenal. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal ariana what great accomplishments already so Thank like you. we've all been saying just looking forward to more of that and hearing from you absolutely <laughs> all right let's go to daphne hello so this poem that i'm going to be performing it's called uh it's called what if and what inspired me to write this poem it was during the summer of 2020 when there was so much racial unrest. And so these are just things that I wish would have would have happened. And it just makes you wonder what if. And I heard about the Deja T. Crawford Foundation through my mom who saw it on Facebook. Awesome. So it's called What If. We always talk about what would happen if we were at the top. But when we try to make these what if actions, we're always stopped by the fear that we'll never get it because of our melanin. But what if we overcame that? And then what if one day we got the final say? What if we were the ones that got to live in a day where we never had to live in a world of fear and spite? What if we got privileges like we were white? 
what if in a world full of bosses and CEOs, we were at the top and everyone would know that we'd busted our butts to get into that position? What if proving ourselves was our whole mission? What if in a world where they expect us to lose and give up, we see our potential and when we win and they say it's beginner's luck, we finally see that we are enough. What if Colin Kaepernick was a veteran in white? Then what would happen if everybody said it was all right? Would there still be people calling things outside of his name? What if it was everybody, everything? What if it was as everything remained the same? What if there was no Magic Johnson and the only name you heard was the name of Larry Bird? What if these, what ifs are reality? What if we're the ones that ought to be, the people who beat the odds and didn't have to live in this world full of racism, KKK, neo-Nazis, and everyone else who doesn't want us to be heard? What if you listen to these what ifs and this became our new reality? And that's the new world we get to see. What happened to all the Maya Angelos? Where did all the Langston Hughes go? What if in this audience, there's another Matthew Henson? What if there was never any tension between all of those who have ideas of old? What if the first slave was never sold? What if in a world full of people with racist views, all of these what ifs became me and you? Thank you. Wow. Awesome. 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 Great. Oh, amazing job. I, I like, um, beautiful uh, piece. Is there a, anybody got tissue? <laughs> <laughs> really, Nate? Yeah. I, listen, I, it just it, the piece speaks for itself. That's ab absolutely. I'm blown away so far by the both of you. That's the let's, let's let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Daphne. All right, let's go to Lana. Hi. Well, I found the foundation on Facebook, and I realized the parallel that Deja and I had with performance because I do sing classical music and I sing any genre you give me, and journalism because I love writing. And my piece will, well, my piece is I Choose to Survive. Never felt like I measured up as I compared myself unnecessarily. Never pleased with my progression. I did things for others, apparently. Running thoughts, unmet goals preoccupied my mind. Spending time being constantly anxious, wasted precious time. Never really looked in the mirror because I was not sure who was looking back. Always hid my true emotions. Love of self is what I lacked. It took a while for me to embrace the true essence of me because I allowed the opinions of others to confine and hinder me. I understand I am uniquely designed and wonderfully tailor-made. The time is now for me to show up ready for the world, conscious and unafraid. This global pandemic tried to slowly rob me of my dignity because of all the inequalities I witness in my community. Racial injustices, food insecurities, health, mental health, housing concerns reached a pinnacle where justice and equity was all I yearned. I can't forget the countless numbers of deaths that shook me to my core. Oh, the pain, sadness, frustration, and fear that occurred behind closed doors. During the pandemic, the things I saw, the things I felt, made me frequently cry out in secret for solutions and divine help. There is an unspoken message in every smile and every single tear. I made a choice to conquer every day with faith over fear. I realize I have to be the change I truly want to see. I have to find the solution or be the solution to rebuild my community. I have to change my thought patterns if I am going to thrive. I choose love, I choose life, I choose to survive. I must continue the social justice fight of my ancestors for the community to be revived. I choose equitable resources, speaking truth to power. I choose to survive. I plan to attain my dreams and goals because I am grateful to be alive. I choose joy, I choose peace. I choose to survive. OMG. <laughs> okay, so uh, amazing. Latavia, I think the next tattoo is FOF, Faith Over Fear, right? 
that was absolutely amazing. Um, you guys are just speaking volumes into not only what is necessary and needed for us to persevere and move forward, but we do need to still assess what happened two years ago. We definitely can't just continue to live and move on as if, oh, you know what, that never happened. Uh, oh, well, we're past that now. No, no, no. There's a rhyme and a reason to everything. And that is why journalism and the arts are so important because it's through journalism and the arts that those words are etched in stone forever to be researched, to be seen. And oh my God, the, the, the fact that you ladies so far, and, and I know I'm excited to see Aaron coming up, but to hear young people speaking correctly with proper assonance and with proper grammar and not being ashamed to sound the way that they sound, I just, I'm done. Like I just, you guys have just blown me away. <laughs> Natavia, did you have anything before we move on? Um, I just, I share the same sentiment as Nate. Uh, these, these young ladies are amazing. And, and again, that's why, you know, we have them as recipients. Correct. And Lana, I hope you don't mind, but you, would you like to share what you'll be doing over the next couple of days? I do not mind at all. So I am a recipient, well, not a recipient. I, um, act, well, yes, the recipient of the gold for nationals at the NAACP. So I will be a part of the NAACP AXO competition and I made it to national. So that's what I'll be doing over the next few weeks, but that's not the poem I will be reciting. So wish me the best of luck. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. And without further ado, Aaron. Hello, everybody. It's Aaron J. McLeod again. Um, to start off, I found out about the foundation through Facebook, almost like, you know, how everyone else did. Uh, my mom, uh, we, she was just scrolling on Facebook one day, and my mom is the type, type of mom who, like, when she finds a scholarship, she will blow my phone up. <laughs> that's good mom <laughs> I I get it, I get it. but uh when when she sent it to me and I read you know what the foundation was about and how determined you guys were about helping the young people I I really couldn't you know say no to you know signing up I did it as soon as I could you know uh, the story just impacted me in a big way so I definitely wanted to be a part awesome yeah uh, as for my piece um my piece is called My Black Brothers and Sisters. Um, I wrote this uh, for a competition uh, here in Detroit, based in Detroit. It was a spoken word competition through the uh, Detroit Pistons Foundation, where I actually won, won runner up. And I won a $20,000 scholarship to any school of my choice, which is Columbia College, Chicago. Um, so here we go. My Black Brothers and Sisters, this may be a hustle. I mean, where should I even start? Should I start where I tell y'all we do everything right? Or should I give you the honest part? You know, fam, we sometimes love to dance around the truth and then make sure it's obligated toward us. And then when somebody give us the underlying truth, you wanna give a big fuss. I mean, when will we realize that we were being watched and judged? Oh, and why is the only story that we wanna have is that we, we got it out the mud? Anyways, I just know that our ancestors would be furious and still curious as to why we walk around with friendly fire. Let me say that again. I just think our ancestors would be furious and curious as to why we walk around with friendly fire on. If they continue to walk around with the mask on as if nothing is going on, I mean, I don't know. Maybe some of us want to stay in the same predicament generation upon generation. I just know that we, we got to let down our pride and look in the mirror. Because some of us don't know that they put us up against each other, which is why we as a community, we look inferior. Let me flip the switch. You see, in this city, we hustle different, talk different, think different. I mean, that is what our ancestors did. I'm pretty sure if we talk to any one of them, they would say that just getting through a full day of their lives was a gift that anyone could give. And even when they were kids, they had to watch their mothers and fathers slaves though, just, just so they could live. But you know what's crazy? is that some of us on the Zoom call go through that today. And I can say that us teens in Detroit and everywhere have mentors to look up to. 
and help us with any situation that we're going through. And it is true that Detroit culture is a culture that moves different. But I mean, if you can't understand that, you just don't understand the mission. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, Aaron, that's great. So, awesome. So Aaron, Aaron, with your piece, it, it uh, reminded me of um, Ariana's piece actually, because one thing about the Greek culture, right? Um, all of those cities of old, um, everyone helped each other out. Um, they went to war together. They, you know, helped feed each other un until something came along, which I know what that something is, but this is not the a setting for, for to talk, to discuss that. But something came along and put brother against brother, sister against sister. So again, this is why spoken word journalism, performing arts is so important because through what Ariana is doing and through what you are doing and, and through what, what the foundation is bringing to the fore, it's exposing these types of attitudes so that somebody will hear it and stop the cycle. And so that we can continue to be a people of progression and not regression. Like you said, you know, if what would the ancestors say, you know, like, why, why are we giving out this friendly fire? You know, thinking that it's love, it's hidden. It's a lot of families have friendly fire hidden in love. And it's, it's been going on for generations and generations again. Um, and that's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal, man. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. So Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you. Natavia? So Aaron, um, because I'm on the review committee, I, I got to see all of, you know, the, the stuff you submitted. And, you know, one thing that I love is that you were a part of Mosaic. And, and so was David. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah. I forgot she really, she really, yeah, yeah. She was a part of Mosaic for a couple of years, okay. um, and and when I saw that, I I knew right away that you know you you were passionate about acting. Thank you so and much. You, you were under some great leadership. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Well, Erin, Ariana, Daphne, Lana, we have really been blessed with hearing your talent tonight. And that's why we wanted to have the talent spotlight. A lot of times I know that you'll receive your awards and you're all definitely deserving, but we want to make sure that people know and hear and see you um, and, and your talents. And, you know, with that being said, we want to make sure that we continue to have our scholarship awards and we want to make sure that we continue with Deja's legacy and we just appreciate all of you. And in order for us to do that and for our listening audience that um, tuned in tonight, it takes donations. Um, we would be remiss if we didn't ask, um, but we do have our website, which is tdtcfoundation.org. Again, that's tdtcfoundation.org. And we do have a donate button. So if you feel inspired with what you've heard tonight and you want to help us award others next year, please consider making a donation. And with that being said, I will uh, turn it over to Nate for closing remarks. Um, and we will just end it with his remarks with such a great, great opportunity uh, to hear all of our deserving recipients. So Nate. So again, to, uh, to the board, to everyone um, in attendance right now, to everyone that will watch this in the future, I just wanna thank you for your time. And to the parents of these wonderful, wonderful students, I wanna thank the parents for allowing them to share their talents uh, with us and for arming them with what they need to progress. Um, it takes a village as the uh, African proverb says, and you can definitely tell that these four students definitely have a strong family background. Um, what can I say? My 
sister and COO Sharita said it the best. Uh, the things like this are great. These opportunities to honor our youth and to support them in their college um, finances, it's awesome, but it does take money to do this. Um, so you can go to the Deja T. Crawford Foundation's uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, website, everywhere, and it will lead you to our website, tdtcfoundation.org. Uh, click on that donate button and we would be very, very appreciative of any gift that you would be able to bestow. Um, again, I know it feels good that we are a part of these children's futures. How better would you feel if you knew that five, 10, 150, however much you would decide to donate, went to support something like what you just heard? So that being said, I wanna thank my board, thank the students, again, the parents, thank all of you watchers and listeners for all of your support. And again, we just thank Deja for being with us on days like this, where we can definitely hold her name up very high and very proudly tell these students, welcome to the Deja T. Crawford Foundation. Um, with that being said, I just wanna say thank you to everyone and have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. And again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great night, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.